Hello and welcome. My name is Abe Novick, and I'm the marketing manager for Project Muse. Thank you so much for taking time away from the rest of the conference activities to spend a few minutes with me learning more about Project Muse and our research resources. While we have around 15 minutes, I plan to move through my presentation fairly quickly, and I'll be happy to stay and uh, take any questions. Uh, I know your time is valuable and I'm grateful you decided to take a breath, a break with us. First, I hope you've taken a moment to get a beverage or a snack appropriate for whatever time of day it is, wherever you are logging in from. I'm sorry, I can't offer anything more than a virtual version of these delicious looking treats. Uh, it's around uh, 12, uh, noon, and I'm still sipping on my uh, cup of coffee here in Baltimore, where it's a little uh, drizzly outside. So here's a little bit of, about what to expect today. I'll give you a short introduction to Project Muse, share more details about our scholarly Jewish studies research materials, including open access materials, tell you a little bit about our resources specifically for teaching and learning and show you some of the benefits of setting up a personalized My Muse account on the platform. So what is Project Muse? In my virtual elevator spiel, we are an online platform for research content in the humanities and social sciences, currently home to some 700 scholarly journals and over 70,000 academic books, all published by distinguished university presses, scholarly societies, and related not-for-profit publishers. We are based at the Johns Hopkins University Press, where we began 25 years ago as a joint project of the press and the university libraries at Johns Hopkins. Libraries can subscribe to journals or purchase books from Muse and provide access to all the users affiliated with their school or organization. We work only with not-for-profit publishers and the vast majority of the fees we collect from libraries go directly back to those publishers, helping to sustain university-based non-commercial scholarly publishing. We also support open access publishing, which I will touch on a little bit more later. Muse's subject coverage spans a wide variety of disciplines in the humanities, and social sciences. We're particularly strong in humanities and topics, including literature and history, global cultural studies, performing arts, religious studies, gender studies, and philosophy, among many others. Today, though, I'm guessing that your topic of interest uh, is Jewish studies. So let's talk first about journals. We offer current issues from about 20 different journals in Jewish studies across a variety of subdisciplines. What you'll see here is just a sampling of our titles. For many of these journals, in addition to current content, we have many years of back files available. In fact, for some journals, we provide online access to all volumes ever published. If your library subscribes to a journal on Muse, you'll have access to every volume and issue we have available. Here are just a few more titles. One of Muse's great strengths is the interdisciplinary nature of the content. I know that in Jewish studies, you're studying all aspects of it across all cultures and all historical periods, and the breadth and depth of our humanities materials can be of great benefit in seeing the bigger picture. And just a few more. Now we add new journals to our collections on Muse every year. So our coverage of new topics and new areas of study is, is always expanding. Moving on to books. Muse is pleased to offer online access to books from over 200 scholarly publishers, including several who are well known for their titles in Jewish studies. Brandeis, Indiana, Rutgers, Syracuse, these are just a sampling of the many respected presses whose books we host. And here are a few more books you'll find on Muse, just to give you an idea of the range. 
And again, the interdisciplinary nature of so many of the publications on Muse mean you're likely to find a lot of useful resources well beyond just those singularly focused on Jewish studies. Finally, I want to uh, let you know also about open access materials on the Muse platform. This is content that is available to anyone worldwide with no restrictions, regardless of whether you're affiliated with a library or institution that has purchased any other Muse materials. We have over 3,000 fully open access books on Muse, many of which have Jewish as a primary subject. Many journals on our platform also make selected articles either permanently open access or temporarily free. As of right now, there are about 900 freely available journal articles in some aspect of Jewish studies. To see these free materials, you can either start here on our open access page and click the browse link, or when you're searching on browsing, books and journals on Muse, you can use this option in the interface. And that will limit what you see to only content to which you have full access. I think it's also important to note that anyone may use the search and browse features on Muse and view tables of contents for books and journal issues, articles and chapter abstracts when available and search within the text of a book. Even if you're not able to access the full text, you may be able to discover relevant materials, which you could then request for interlibrary loan or recommend your library purchase. And next, uh, I'd like to point out a section on our site that can be very useful if you're a faculty member or anyone looking for materials for instruction and class use. You'll find the link to these instructor resources right here on our homepage. Both our free materials and any Muse journals or books you have access to through your library are great for course use because there are no limits on simultaneous use and no restrictions on downloading or printing. Your students never have to wait for someone else to finish using a book before they can access it. The interface is mobile friendly, easy to use across all devices, and articles and book chapters are in basic HTML or PDF formats. There is no need to download special software or learn to use a proprietary e-reader. You can confidently include links to articles and books in your syllabi or learning management systems. These are permanent and do not change. In the Foreign Instructors section, you'll find many helpful resources for those who are adapting to teaching in online and hybrid environments. We have gathered a reading list of relevant materials in use in, in MUSE offering evidence-based research on online teaching, distance learning, and many other topics on higher ed and technology. And we also have some quick references to help identify potential course use materials in a variety of core, timely, and topical subjects, including Jewish studies. So I hope you'll take some time to explore these resources if you think they might be useful to you. Uh, finally, I'd like to briefly introduce you to our personalized My Muse accounts. While not at all required to use Muse, a My Muse account can help you customize your experience and build a personal library of Muse content related to your research or teaching interests. First, let me say that we value your privacy and we collect no personal information when you set up an account. It can be entirely anonymous as all that is needed is a username and password that you create. Some other optional services may require sharing an email address such as getting email alerts about new issues or your favorite journal, but you can decide whether to opt into these. I also wanna mention one more thing before I wrap up. Muse is not a publisher, but we're always looking for great new content to add to our collection. 
So if you edit a not-for-profit journal or work with a small non-commercial press that publishes peer-reviewed books and don't have a good way to distribute these materials to academic libraries in digital format, we'd love to talk with you about joining our community of publishers. So here is my name and information, and please be in touch with me if you have any questions. And thank you very much for your attention and look forward to seeing you in person.